We have a pretty fun exercise today. We're going to build a CSV generator and we're going to be able to mimic CRM data. So essentially what the goal of this is to do is to be able to take in headers and to be able to take in data as arrays. This is very similar to what you would do if you created a generator in a Rails application or something like that. And you can even see down here, we have a array of header names. So these would be the things on the spreadsheet that would be in the top row. And then we have actual data. And as you can see, the data is simply a set of arrays with each array containing three values. So this is going to take up what we're looking for in terms of the data inside of the spreadsheet. Now, if you want to take a look at what this actually looks like, then let me close out this and I'm going to open up the generated test file and let me pull it over here. So this is exactly what we're looking to create. So I have this test file and this is what our test is going to be comparing against. So we can, I'm not gonna save that. So if I switch back into the code right here, what our test is looking for is it's going to read the sample data. This is a file that I just opened up and then it is going to run this method that we need to implement, CSV tool method. It's gonna take in the headers. These are these headers right here. And then it's also going to take in a second argument of CRM data. Then it's going to store that. So it's gonna read that data in as a generated file. And then what the expectation is, is that the generated file that we created should equal the test file that I just opened up. Now that's just on the testing, just so you have kind of an idea of what the test is looking for. To give even a more simplistic kind of uh, kind of goal, we are just creating a CSV downloader where we can take different elements such as arrays, headers, that kind of data, and then we can create a CSV file that can be opened up in Excel. And as you can see, I put some comments here that says the file needs to be created with the name and the path of support slash generated file. So if you have cloned this entire repo, then there is a support directory that you can pass this into. And the first thing I'm gonna do is we need to require the CSV library provided by Ruby. Now with that imported, we can come down and start our implementation and it's surprisingly easy to do this. Thanks to the CSV library that Ruby provides, we are gonna be able to open and create a new file and then pipe in these values. So the first thing I'm gonna do is a CSV in all caps, open, and then we need to pass in where we want our file to be saved. As you can see from my comment, it's gonna be support slash generated file dot CSV. And then we need to say, we need to give the permissions for the file. And in this case, it's gonna be WB, which means that we have the ability to write to this file and create the file. From there, we're going to open up a block and the CSV open method takes a block. And inside of this, as you may have guessed, this is where everything is actually gonna happen in terms of taking in the data and storing it. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our block variable and we're gonna pipe in the headers. Now these headers are provided for us right here as the first argument in the method. So it's going to take the CSV file and it's gonna pipe in the headers. The next thing that it's going to do is we're going to iterate over the data. So I'm gonna say data dot each do and the name I'm gonna give the next block variable is column because I think that that's kind of the best way to describe what it's actually gonna be doing. And then we're going to pipe in each one of the columns. And because of the way the data is set up, where these are each elements, 
then essentially what's going to happen is it's going to take the first row or the first element in the array. It's going to add that to the CSV file. And then from there, it's going to take the second one. It's going to add that to the CSV file, and then it's going to take the third one. And then it is going to pipe all of those in. And because they're array elements and because they're separated, so this is essentially an array of arrays, then the CSV library by default is going to know that these each need to be separated by a comma, and that is how it is going to create the file for us. Now let's, before we actually get into running our test, let's actually copy this, and I'm going to... I'm going to indent all of this just so we can see it a little bit easier. And now let's call our method. So here I'm going to say CSV tool and pass in headers and CRM data as our data elements. Now with all of this saved, I'm gonna close this file and let's run it. So let's say Ruby. February the 3rd, and oh, just so you know that I'm not making this up, let's also take a look at the support directory. So if we look in here, you can see that right now we only have the CRM file. But now if I say Ruby February the 3rd and run this, if everything works, then now if I run tree support and take a look in the directory, now you can see that that created a file for us. And if I try to open this file up, this opens up Excel, and there you go. This is the file that we created. So hopefully you can see there how straightforward that is in regards to how, you, how easy it is to create a CSV file. A lot of it comes down to the CSV library. If we didn't have this, it would take a lot of time in order for us to parse through the data and then be able to take it and find the spots where the breakpoints are for the columns and for headers and all of those kind of things. But because the CSV library is pretty intuitive, you can simply pass in array values exactly like we're doing right here. And this is going to give us exactly the behavior that we're looking for. So this takes in first a array for the header elements, and then it takes in an array of arrays, and then we can iterate over it. Now, the one thing that I want to kind of reiterate is this does not take in the array of arrays and just, it doesn't know what to do with it. All we're doing is we're iterating over that collection and then inside of this each block, we're passing in a single array and that is what the CSV library is expecting. It's expecting to have the ability to simply get array elements passed into it, each one of them separated. And to make it easy, we have the headers with the same number of columns as we have in our data. This becomes a little bit more complicated when you have data that would say look something like this, where you have you know another element, but instead of having three, you might have four, and then that starts to become a little bit more complicated. You need to go and do some data normalization here to make sure that these three uh, these three other items would be able to match up, maybe have a nil value in one of those or in each of those at the end, just to make sure that you're working with the same number of elements. So that's something that's important to keep in mind. Now I'm going to clear all of this out and let me save it. I'm going to remove the generated file that we created because I want our test to go through the exact same process. So now if I say RSpec, February the 3rd, everything here should work. One example, zero failure. So that means that it compared the first file, the test file, with what we generated, and now it, it, it says that those matched up. If I run tree support one more time, you can see that now we have the generated file. So that is how easy it is to build a CSV generator in Ruby.